Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. I'm Sriram and this video is part 7 of our Geometry Dash game on Scratch 3. Now in case you've not watched parts 1 to 6, I will leave a card for you right here. Now in parts 1 to 6 we did quite a bit of work and in this video what we'll be doing is we'll be making sure that our player can fly. So we'll be coding the entire flying engine. Obviously the collisions and all of that will be done in future videos but you will be able to see the player literally fly. So let's start. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is to remind you what happened in the previous video within our flying change. So we broadcasted this message called switch variables. And when we do receive switch variables, we are going to make a couple of changes. Um, what I'm going to do before that, however, is to make sure that we start at a different exposition. Because I don't want to go through, you know, starting all over again and jumping through all the obstacles because it's just a waste of time. So you can see um, start at 2300 instead. And when you hit the green flag, you can see that boom, we hit the background changes. All of that happens. Pretty cool. So we start here. Um, I'll keep that other set X to negative 152 right here. Um, so that later on I can just put that back in. But uh, let's keep it like this. So now let's scroll down and uh, let's grab a when we receive. Um, and let's say when we receive switch variables. Okay. So when we do receive this, I will set my Y velocity to be zero. So set Y well to zero. And um, I'll also make three new variables. So all of this are going to be for the sprite only. The first one is called flying direction. Um, the second one is called um, touching ground. So touching ground. And I'm going to follow this up with a question mark uh, and mark it for the sprite only. Okay, so it's a Boolean variable for the sprite only. And the last variable I'm going to make is called touching air. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, not air, but touching ceiling. So if this is touching the ceiling, um, then this variable is going to be set to true. And I just realized that I forgot to put in a question mark. So I'm going to rename the variable and add that right in. All right, there we go. So this video is going to contain quite a lot of code. So I will try to move as fast as I can. So let us set now um, touching ceiling to no. Uh, and let us set touching floor to yes, because that's the condition when we are uh, touching ground to yes, because that's a condition uh, which is true when we first hit the, um, you know, when we first do hit the um, flying change. Um, I'll also be setting flying direction. Uh, where's that? Yep, flying direction to be 90. Now remember, um, uh, the direction is going to be what the player makes with the Y axis and not the X axis. So 90 means the player is faced, you know, straight like this. In case he's tilted, then it's going to be zero where he's, you know, looking upwards. Anyway, that's just for information. So now let's continue. So this is the start um, and now let's create a new block, okay? I'm going to call this key movement and this is going to be one part of our air engine, which I will explain. Um, but as of now, run without screen refresh. I will uh, explain how this all goes together. Um, let's start. So uh, within key movement, we will say, first of all, if key either space or up arrow is pressed, because this is how we control our movement. You can grab an and from, uh, you can grab an or from the operators and duplicate this to space and up arrow key, just like the way I'm doing and put this back in. So we'll have these two conditions. And in case these two are true, then we want to move upwards. So Y velocity is going to control where which direction we're moving in so i will simply set the y velocity um to be eight so we're moving upwards no matter what when we do press you know the button but remember we'll have gravity as well so y velocity is going to keep dropping um after this we can start to check a few things so um you can grab an if else okay and we will be uh, checking the uh, let's do touching ceiling first so grab an equal to from the operators category and say yes. So we'll check if touching ceiling is equal to yes. And if this is the case, then um, we'll basically want the player to stay um, as he is in his flying costume, okay? And uh, I'll make sure he points in direction 90. Uh, oops, so point this way, that's 90, I think. Oh, God, 94. Yep, we got 90, finally. So we'll just want him to point this way. We don't really want him to point upwards because you can't literally poke your way into a ceiling. So let us set here flying direction 
to be 90. We're basically going to control the variable this way. And uh, once we do set um, flying direction to 90, within this if else, we'll be doing you know the same thing in case um, in case uh, the uh, flying direction is below a particular limit. So you can grab um, you can actually change this. So you can grab an uh, you can grab an or um, and then you can grab an equal to and a less than. So basically, I'm saying if it's less than equal to something. And uh, I'll be using the flying direction variable here. So flying direction here, flying direction here. And the number I've chosen is 48. It's just a multiple of six, so it makes things easier. So you can see if flying direction is less than 48 or it's equal to 48, then we won't set flying direction to um, anything. Oops, yeah, we would set flying direction, sorry. Uh, we will simply keep it fixed as uh, at 48. And in case it's more than 48 or it's not equal to 48 as well, um, then what we can do is we will not set, but we will change flying direction by six, um, not six, but negative six. So it's going to keep coming down. That's the general idea. And um, after this, we can go into the else. Now, remember that this entire if then is in case, um, is in case, you know, the space key is pressed. And I just realized I made a pretty huge mistake. So you need to put this if then uh, if else this way. So it's going to be right after set y velocity to 8 and all the code I'm mentioning now is going to come below this else statement. So if we are not pressing the keys, then what we can do is we can check if we're touching the ground because in case we are pressing the keys, I mean it automatically means that we are somewhere up, right? We're not in the ground because we just moved up. So now we can check if touching ground is equal to yes. So I'm going to duplicate this uh, and things are very, very remarkably similar. So if touching ground is equal to yes, uh, and it's quite a pain to find the block, uh, there we go. So if touching ground is yes, then once again, we will set flying direction to 90. Now here we will be defining the upper boundary. So you can switch it this way and you can see if 108 is less than flying direction or flying direction is equal to 108. In this case, we will fix it to 108 because we don't want it to look vertically up. I mean, that just looks odd. And in case this is not the case, what we'll do is simply change flying direction by three, okay? And this is very, very important. So what we're literally doing is making the um, player slowly point himself down, okay? That's the idea. Now you could make flying direction a function of the y velocity and I did try that using some basic trigonometry, but it was just looking so bad. I mean, the um, uh, it was turning so um, it was turn its turning was just fragile. It was it basically looked horrible. Um, so I would recommend just doing it my way like this. Okay, now let's get into the other blocks. So head over to my blocks, make a new block. Once again, run without screen refresh, and this time I'll call this check touching ground. Okay, so check touching ground and um, here we will be checking if we are touching the ground or not. So simply put, we'll just be um, checking whether we should set touching ground to yes or set touching ground to no. Um, this is fairly straightforward. Um, this whole thing is going to happen only if touching ground is already equal to yes. Um, otherwise, you know, we would be applying this in the air engine, which I will get into probably in the next video. So if touching ground is equal to yes, um, in this case, what we'll do is, first of all, to make sure we get the right position, we will set x2, uh, and I forgot to add in touching ground, I'm not sure what uh, what exactly went through, um, but add in if touching ground is equal to yes, and if that is true, then we will set x2, x minus scroll x. So pretty much the same thing as we're going to, we're just going using the variables here right away. So x minus scroll x, and uh, after this, we will change y, by one. So change y by um, not one, negative one, because the ground is below and not above. And once we do this, we will check in case we are touching the ground. Because in case we are touching the ground, we will move him up right above the ground such that he's not touching. So it's important we constantly keep checking um, using this block and checking if we're touching the ground. So change y by negative one. And in case at this point, we are either touching the platforms or we're touching, let's say the floors. So grab an OR from the operators category 
and you can see if we are touching not mouse pointer but either floors or the platforms so in case if either of these are true then we will simply set touching ground to yes and in case these are not true then we will set touching ground to no uh, i think this was very 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 simple it wasn't too much it didn't really take too much effort to understand and the last thing i will do is i will undo what i did so i will change y back to plus one so that there's no change in the player's y position uh, and that's pretty much it now we can duplicate all of this for a touching uh not uh, we will be checking if we are touching ceiling okay a uh, very very similar code and what we'll be doing in this case is instead of changing y by plus one we will be changing y by minus one and we'll also change touching ground to touching ceiling so just right click on the variable change it to touching ceiling and uh, you can do that for all of those variable setting blocks and uh, change y by positive one here and change y by negative one here and that's pretty much it so these are the three most important blocks um, that we'll be using and now we can get into the air engine okay so for the air engine i'm going to create another new block um but remember that the air engine is just going to be all of these blocks integrated together with some extra code so head over to blocks create a new block i'm going to call this air engine and i will run without screen refresh so there we go um, and when we're defining air engine, let's start by switching the costume to the flying player because in case we miss this, everything is pretty much messed up. Uh, after this, I will be doing the same thing as I did earlier. I will be setting X to um, X minus scroll X. So head over to operators, grab minus, then variables and say X minus scroll X. Um, there we go. Uh, after this, I will be using those blocks one by one. So first I will check if we are touching the ground, then I will check if we are touching the ceiling, and then I will check for any key movement. So this alters the flying um, direction and Y velocity accordingly, but it does not include gravity. So I want the Y velocity to constantly change, and I'm gonna choose gravity as negative two. So I will change Y velocity by negative two each tick so that the player comes down slowly. Okay, so next we can change y by y velocity because if we don't, if the y velocity variable um, does not have an impact on the y um, position, there's really no purpose to it. So we will change y by y velocity. Uh, after this, we will point in direction, uh, point in direction, flying direction. So that's the whole point of this whole, uh, this variable and all the code that we did earlier. So we'll point in this particular direction. And um, next, we will be checking if we are touching some obstacles or not. And this includes the flows as well. And that code is going to take a while to make and I'm already, um, you know, quite over time here. So I will just shorten it and show you the output as of now. So we will jump here, boom. And all right, so we didn't really change to anything. And I think that was because I messed up with the modes. Uh, uh, so let me uh, let me quickly correct that. Um, I need to find where we had that. There we go. So we, within our player engine, we simply just used our ground engine and we never even used the air engine. So to fix this, grab an if else. And uh, within the if then, you will say if mode is equal to ground, then we will use the ground engine. But if mode is equal to air, which is the else statement, we will use the air engine. Very, very simple. And that's going to deal with everything we don't even need to do anything more so now let's head back into the code and there we go you can see that the flying direction constantly keeps changing um we don't really see an impact with the y position though and the reason this is not happening is because we're using the y variable and not the y position so to fix this head back into um just head back into your uh, uh where's that yeah the air engine and within this air engine you just need to say set y to y position. So head over to variables, say set y to y position. And this is gonna make sure that all the changes do happen and we change our y. So let me jump and boom. So you can see that we can fly and it's obviously not as elegant as it could be. Or uh, we also don't really feel any sort of bounces or reflections. But this is a start. In the next video, we'll be completing this entire, um, you know, flying animation and the flying cycle. And then we'll get into adding in the particles, the explosions and all the rest of the game.
If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.